Hello, everyone. I'm Sheriff Wayne Ivey, the Brevard County Sheriff's Office, and I want to give everyone an update this evening on the deputy-involved shooting that took place on Monday, August 30th, when two of our deputies were ambushed by an extremely violent career criminal during a traffic stop in West Melbourne. The attack and ambush was perpetrated by a violent career criminal with a history of 40 charges for crimes including drug trafficking, aggravated assault while discharging a firearm, battery on a law enforcement officer, and attempted first-degree felony murder as well as convictions for robbery with a firearm, failing to register as a career offender, possession of a firearm by a convicted felon, resisting arrest with violence, possession of controlled substances, and various probation violations. Even worse and more disgusting is that this career criminal, whose name doesn't even deserve mentioning, was actually out on bond with active warrants for additional felony drug trafficking cases where he could attempt to kill our deputies when he should have been safely locked behind bars where he couldn't victimize another citizen or innocent bystander. I'm sure that like me, you're probably asking yourself right now why a thug with this kind of criminal history was ever given a bond where he could be out on our streets to harm someone else. That's a question I promise to find the answer to, but for now, I'm just extremely thankful that our deputies are safe and the suspect is no longer on this planet where he could put someone else's life in peril. As I stated earlier, this incident occurred when one of our deputies conducted a traffic stop in the unincorporated area of West Melbourne on a vehicle that was occupied by three adult subjects and a two-month-old baby that was actually sitting in the back seat where the perpetrator of the ambush was seated. The entire traffic stop, ambush, and deputy-involved shooting was captured on two separate dash cameras, and as you will see in the video that I'm about to show you, the suspect was the initial aggressor as he concealed his weapon until exiting the vehicle and immediately firing upon our deputies with a pistol grip styled high-powered rifle in an attempt to take their lives and avoid arrest as he was wanted on various outstanding warrants. Now I want to caution everyone that the video you are about to see is extremely violent, graphic, and also a perfect example of just how dangerous a job our deputies and law enforcement officers face across the country each and every day. I am first going to play the video for you in its entirety and in real time. Then I'm going to break the video down in slow motion while providing a step-by-step -step explanation of what was taking place and why the actions of our deputies saved their lives and the lives of others at the scene, including the two-month-old baby in the back seat of the car that was directly in the line of fire when this extremely violent individual decided to try and kill our deputies. The video I'm about to show you was captured by the dash camera in the vehicle of Deputy Brian Potters, who was the second deputy to arrive on scene in an effort to assist Deputy Tyler Toman during the traffic stop. The segment of the video I'm going to show you tonight begins immediately prior to the time of the ambush and captures the entire incident that involved a total of 61 rounds being fired within a minute. As I said, the video is graphic in nature and not only captures video of the incident, but the audio of all involved as well. During the video, you will hear music playing in the background that is actually music playing on the stereo of Deputy Potter's car, captured by the internal microphone system of the car as the incident was taking place. Again. The entire ambush and response by our deputies takes place within a minute and sadly captures what our deputies and law enforcement officers from across the country potentially face every day of their lives. What's that? In the car? All right, partner. He wants to talk to you out here. Is that all your? Yeah. You got, I'll watch it for you. He's all right. I got babies. Oh, you got a dog too? Hell. <laughs> I'll, I'll make sure they're all right. I got babies too, man. Huh? Okay. Shit! 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 Now, as you can see and hear from the video, this was an extremely violent ambush that both of our deputies and the occupants of the vehicle were extremely blessed to survive. This individual had absolutely no regard for human life and was focused on only one thing, killing our deputies to avoid arrest as he knew he was facing several minimum mandatory prison sentences in his pending cases. As you can see, 
The subject not only fired numerous rounds at our deputies, but also after his gun jam, used the butt of the rifle to violently and repeatedly strike Deputy Potters in the head, causing significant injuries and lacerations. Let there be no doubt, this individual got exactly what he deserved. And to those out there who might be foolish enough to ask why we shot him so many times, that answer is simple, because evil can never be dead enough. Now that you've had a chance to see the ambush and response by our deputies as it occurred in real time, I'm going to show you the incident as it unfolds in slow motion so that you can see exactly what took place and how our deputies responded to the threat. So the first thing we see is Deputy Toman talking with the female occupant of the vehicle, while a second occupant of the vehicle is seen leaning against the trunk of the car where the perpetrator is actually seated in the back seat. I want to be very clear in stating that neither of these two occupants had anything to do with this ambush or criminal activity, and I'm extremely grateful that they were not injured and how they immediately return to the scene is instructed by Deputy Toman. At an early point in the video, you observe Deputy Toman asking Deputy Potters to have the third subject exit the vehicle. Prior to this point, Deputy Potters has been very politely conversing with the subject and talking about the two month old baby in the back seat and a dog that was also in the back seat as well. As Deputy Potters asked the subject to exit the vehicle, he is immediately and without warning ambushed with a small stock AR-15 styled rifle that is pointed and fired directly at him. Deputy Potters immediately attempts to avoid being shot by trying to create distance between himself and the shooter, who aggressively opens fire on him as he takes cover at the front of the vehicle. The subject now fires at Deputy Potters from the driver's side of the vehicle and appears to actually get hit himself, as you also hear Deputy Potters announce that he has been hit with gunfire. The subject then goes between the two vehicles and additional shots can be heard being fired. Deputy Toman and Deputy Potters can now briefly be seen taking a position between Deputy Potter's patrol car and Deputy Toman's patrol unit when the suspect emerges from behind Deputy Toman's patrol unit and violently strikes Deputy Potters in the head with the butt of the rifle. As the suspect repeatedly batters Deputy Potters in the head with the butt of the gun, the two of them fall to the ground where the subject continues to strike Deputy Potters in the head with the gun. Deputy Toman at this point gains a tactical advantage on the target and fires multiple rounds, thus eliminating the threat and saving Deputy Potter's life. As a result of the ambush and repeated blows to the head by this violent thug, Deputy Potter sustained a gunshot wound to the lower leg, multiple head lacerations, tissue damage, a concussion, and fractures of the orbital bone and sinuses. Thankfully, Deputy Toman did not suffer any injuries during the incident, and the suspect was subsequently pronounced dead from gunshots sustained during the ambush and attack on our deputies. As you can clearly see from the video, both of our deputies were in a battle for their lives as this disgusting and evil individual had a blatant disregard for their lives, the life of others at the scene, and even the life of the two-month-old baby who was in the car he repeatedly used for cover as he tried to kill both Deputy Potters and Deputy Toman. When I tell you that we are blessed that God was watching over our deputies and those present at the scene, I mean it from the bottom of my heart, and I could not be more proud of the actions of Deputy Potters and Deputy Toman. As I said earlier, this case is a perfect example of what is wrong with our criminal justice system. When a registered career criminal with 23 felony charges, 17 misdemeanor charges, multiple convictions for violent offenses, and two active and pending drug trafficking cases is out on our streets where he can attempt to kill our deputies and put others' lives at risk, something is wrong with our system. And it's time that we as a society of law-abiding citizens say, enough is enough. Folks, I can't speak for you, but I am personally sickened by the fact that this thug with such a violent criminal history was out of jail where he could almost kill two of our deputies. It's time that we as law-abiding citizens start demanding that violent criminals who can't obey the law are kept behind bars where they can't victimize anyone else. As I close tonight, on behalf of Deputy Toman, Deputy Potters and their families, and also our entire agency, I want to personally thank our community for the amazing support and love for our agency you have shown since this incident occurred last week. Your emails, personal messages, and phone calls of love and prayers mean more to us than you will ever know and serve as a constant reminder of how blessed we are to serve in a community that loves us so much. Thank you.